Good afternoon. We're here with the great legendary winemaker from Crown Heights, Harav Chassid Yosef Zekan, who just finished a tasting presentation with a group from Chabad of Arlington, Massachusetts. Also, his esteemed daughter, who's a shlucha there. But more, let's now talk about these wines. I think, if I may, if I stand correct, I don't know any other wine brand that almost specializes in Pesach. Like when someone thinks, yeah, actually the name of the wine, it says Eminent Passover Wine. Is there any other wine that I know, kosher wine that's, and also your grape juice, also a, P a Pesach special, right? Now I know, so I don't know. So what's the, em let's start with the more popular one that's mandatory, at least I know my mother-in-law's house, it's mandatory drinking. What makes it a Passover wine? Well, this was my first uh, concept when I started making wine, was the idea of how to keep your cup after the four cups. And the concept was to keep it a low alcohol wine and easy to drink. <clears throat> the reason why it's 7% alcohol and not lower is because it was also the, I took into consideration the concept of Dina de Malchus and Dina. And according to American law, wine is only considered wine once it has 7% alcohol. If it's lower than 7% alcohol, it's considered only a wine product. So, excuse my ignorance, when, how do you make something more or less alcohol? It's not a... So it all depends where the grapes are grown. In, in this particular case, the grapes are grown here in New York State, and they don't, the, the sugar content doesn't get very high. So therefore, we, have, we know that for wine to turn, let's say, 12% alcohol, we need 24% sugar. Oh, so... In the grapes. In the brie, it's called bricks. The bricks is basically the percent of sugar that are in the grapes. And it's kind of difficult. In New York, we get 22 bricks, and that's basically the maximum. Sometimes so the wine is only, it has a limit based on the sugar. It can't do more or less than whatever sugar is in it. Unless the law allows you to add sugar to be, able to be able to make the wine a little higher in alcohol, because most of the grapes in New York State can come in at 16, 18, 20% sugar. So what makes it a Passover wine is has a focus to a Seder consumer, where it's enough alcohol to be, Hamar, I guess, Chashev? Yes, and it's considered Hamar Hamadina in that sense. And also, it's low, it's, it's not as sweet because the grapes content, the sugar content in the grapes are much lower. So therefore, whatever remaining sugar that's in the grape, the that's in the wine, it's from the grapes, and that would be uh, corresponding to whatever remains after fermenting about 14% of the sugar in the grape. So if I have a 20% sugar uh, content in the grape, and I ferment it 14% into 7% alcohol, so I'll be remaining with only 4% sugar in the wine. Now, I know this is another Pesach-specific product, the Mangi's grape juice. What makes it Pesach-specific? It was just something that I found that, you know, besides the typical Concord grape juice uh, that it's for, everyone is familiar with and it's very yummy, it tastes like a candy, these were some interesting grapes I found growing in New York State, they're called French hybrids, which uh, if you were able to and blend them and, uh, and I turned them into grape juice and not letting it, you know, and bottle it as under that grape juice. Mostly it's called Cayuga grapes is what I'm using in this blend. Mavushal or no? It's Mavushal, yes. Got you. Um, does it come in non mavushal version or does it? No. No. So you're saying since Pesach is a big wine and grape juice season, you made another variety of grape juice. It's available all year round or just Pesach? Okay, it's generally we make it for Pesach and then whatever remains is available. Got you. Now... As someone who's not so sophisticated like myself, I walk into the wine store, I ask them, what's the cheapest, best, interesting wine? And they often direct me to different brands, usually around like $9 average. But now, what do I call Yassi? What's the proper title? Wine master maker, atelier, atelier, I forgot the words. Uh, now launch a new wine, 
only at seven dollars retail. Is that correct? Uh, hold on a second. Let me just turn off. The, ignore this call. Is at seven. So this is a new, high quality, low price. Um, and I only say high quality because. Please Yossi, taste it. I want you to taste it. Sure. Because I know Yossi Zekan is a man of integrity, and he only deals and involved with high quality things. You know, other not other wine companies have millions of wines, but he has a very small lineup of things, so he puts a lot of attention and focus the whole year. It's very good. It's very drinkable. But I can't get into more any more sophisticated feedback because I'm not that sophisticated. <laughs> it's basically a very light, easy drinking Cabernet Sauvignon that can be used for everyday drinking. And now as a new-ish packaging, I remember the Kessler packaging a little different, but I guess a few years ago already it changed, correct? Many years ago. <laughs> You're a little behind. <laughs> As someone who's a food person, I don't know, I'm a little spaced out. Um, so $7, very drinkable, made in New York. Yes, it's a bushel, and it's, it's made from California grapes, blended with New York grapes. Which is interesting, because all the cheaper Cabernet Sauvignons are all imported from like Chile or Argentina. Yeah. The fact that you could beat it on price and still be local is very impressive. And it's the best tasting Cabernet. And it's definitely... Kosher, best tasting kosher Cabernet out there, definitely. So are we allowed to ask you what your best-selling wine and your lineup is? And it's available Mavushal in the 750, and then it also comes as not Mavushal in the one and a half liter bottle screw cap. Got you. But this is a cork. And this one is a cork. Very cool. Because someone told me he only drinks wine with a cork. Otherwise, does it make a difference in, in flavor of cork or, or aging it or no? There are some people that say, yeah, it definitely makes a difference. And some people say, no, it doesn't. So there's uh, Zero. <laughs> different different opinions about it. Saying a screw cap could seal as well as a cork. That's what, there are some opinions of that. Conflicting. The screw, the screw cap companies feel that way. <laughs> <laughs> it's, but it's, I think it's a good idea that you kept the cork on the, on the 750. It gives that, you know, prestigious feeling. Because any time there's a screw cap in a line, people are like, you know... An Eminent Dry, it's, what does that sell for usually? It sells for about uh, six dollars a bottle. And, uh... Very cool. I know. I know. Growing up as a kid, the only non Kedem wine I ever knew that was fancy was this Muscatini wine. It used to be a black label, I think, right? No, it was always that label. It was a red. No, this is a newer red label. Muscatini. No. This never changed. Nope. It's about forty years old. Thirty. This years label. Old. Oh, the label. Uh, the changed. label, yeah. yeah. It used to be black, I think, the right? Label changed. I don't know. Black with gold lettering, I think. And I, I remember as a kid, Joseph Zakon was the only Kedem alternative. I'm sure there were more or not that many more. When I started out, there weren't too many. I mean, I was nine, I was 20 years old, 1981. And uh, that's when I got my winery license. But uh, over the years, of uh, everyone is a winemaker. Everyone can make wine. I mean, if, if you want me to talk about wine, really into making wine, there's only two people that you need that are that should be qualified in, in, in their skill, and that is the grower, the farmer, because it really takes a lot of work to grow grapes and to, under, and to know how to grow them and understand when it rains and if it doesn't rain at the right time and and etc. And also how to run all this. Is that true? They're harvest at night. Yes, and they sometimes always no because it's cooler, it's easier when it's cooler to harvest than when in the heat of the day, especially in the very hot climates like Israel and California. It's easier just yeah. human wise, yes, and some claim it's better for the grapes. So, there's always many different opinions about everything in wine. And the however, second person is well, however, the grower, the, neck, and the, neck, and the second person is the mechanic. So, the grower has to be a I don't know, know how to grow grapes, be a mechanic for his equipment. And then you need a mechanic in the winery because a winery that's not run mechanically efficient and isn't kept clean and actually cleanliness is the number one uh, most important part of a, of a quality winery, you can't make wine. Now, once you have great grapes and you can run them efficiently in the winery, the grape will actually make itself into wine. You don't need the winemaker. However, 
the wine maker is what I was once told by a famous wine writer from the New York Times. He passed away. His name was Frank Pryle. And he told me that a real winemaker has the art of making wine. And he said, and he told me then, and I, you know, I was innocent, didn't really understand all the nuances of wine making. He said, you have that artfulness to make the wine. Is this the official wine of the Knesset Shlochem or the Muscatini? <laughs> and for how many years? And we did you have to? Was. And did you have to pay exclusivity or sponsorship? We have different wines. We have at the Kinnis. Not always we have Muscatini. But it's always you. Huh? It's always your brand at the Kinnis. When I, yeah, so far, I mean, I'm, I'm honored to be able to serve the Kinnis. For how many wine. years? I don't know. Whatever the amount of years. 20 years? Whatever. Wow. Is that the big, I guess, the biggest order of the year? <laughs> no, Pesach, we get very big orders. For, I'm saying from one place. Is that your... Oh, yeah. Well, it's a big order, yes. I mean, it's 4,000 uh, shlokim at a time. Or 6,000, I don't know. So how many cases is that? 100 cases? I don't know. I just, uh, that's, that's the, when I think of Joseph Zekan wine, I think of Pesach, Emin and Dry, and I think of the Kinnitz HaShulchan, that's the, the only drink, only wine available. But the original wine I made was Kesser before Joseph Zekan. This was the original name, was Kesser wine. Gotcha. And then we have also now Fabrengen wine. And Fabrengen wine is also the idea of more lower priced? Yes. Wine. And what does the 750 Fabrengen wine go for? I believe three, retail uh, three four dollars wow is that the cheapest kosher wine on the market mm -hmm. wow so he focused on super high end and well, super low end i don't so focus on super high end I now what about your nature screaming brand well, this is something very unique that i've made with two vintages so far one 2018 and this was a 2020 vintage and the 2020 vintage won a bronze medal and it uh, has no sulfites and it's lower in alcohol because the grapes come from New York, so we have less sugar content, lots of a lower alcohol. Now, and, and it developed very nicely in the bottle. It will not age forever, but it's definitely not going to go bad in another two years. So, sulfites let it age? Well, sulfites help preserve the wine better, but it's. It's also the concept of when you make wine without sulfites, you have more of a chance of bad yeasts or bad bacteria getting in. And thank God, you know, we were able, I was able to perfect it so for that not to happen. And that's, I guess, the job of the winemaker. But the truth is, if you have... Grapes, and what does that retail at? This retails about uh, $19.99 a bottle. So that was that, and your muscatini goes for what, so? I think fourteen ninety nine. So that's your most premium, the screaming. Yeah. And does it say Joseph Zeka? No. It does wine, but the front label, Nature Screaming, is the brand or the, the brand is the brand. Right, it's a really nice label. Very nice. And then besides this, you have the for bringing grape juice. It's for bringing grape juice. Seven seventy yeah. still exists. Well, the seven seventy brand still exists. Yeah, it sells. It sells nicely. It still does. Yeah, Kesser. Yeah, Kesser. With one of the originals. The who still has the Zalman climate paintings? The Fabrengen ones. Fabrengen, but not certain Fabrengen, not all the Fabrengens. There's the Fabrengen original, which has the Zalman climate painting, and then you have the Jerusalem series, which has a David Nachshon painting. And now we're going into a new. We're going to discontinue the Jerusalem series, and we're going into a dancing series, which will be very unique. Which artist? Very unique. It's a designer. Designer, no artist. Mm -hmm. As a art dealer, so uh, if we were the art agent, we would s s uh, lobby mm -hmm. Rabbi Yassel to uh, put <laughs> some of my artists on his wine. Designer, uh, designer is Shmuley Mines. Very talented young fellow. Very cool. But I'm sure, just from an art value perspective, the fact that you put climate and oxygen on the bottles of wine helped bring up the values of both artists since fami familiarity with the paintings oh i know from the wine definitely helped it so i don't know i you know it's probably a good idea to buy some paintings put it on your wine <laughs> let the popularity go up and then flip it at the end this way you get upside on the painting mm -hmm. just an idea from uh 
Okay, we'll, we will maybe uh, collaborate <laughs> from a uh, marketing art dealer, food packaging person. Oh, it's all together. So, the, so how many different SKUs are in the Joseph Zacon collection? 20? No, well, about 15. 15. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then the grape juices and the Fabrenians. But that didn't make it to the tasting today. No. <laughs> so you should guys check out this. I remember I tried once in the past. Cancer grape juice, the new Cabernet Sauvignon, the most affordable one and the best tasting on the market. And that could age, the cab could age? Yeah, for a few years, not much. Not much because? It doesn't have, it's not high in tannins or for it to be to age. It's a very soft Cabernet. So the more intense the wine is, it could age more? Generally, if, if the fruit, if, if it also has the fruitiness behind it. This has the fruitiness, but it doesn't have the tannin. Oh, so it's something I don't know. Not all wines age. Correct. And how do you know? By tasting them. And you know, if by tasting, you can tell if it could age or not. Yes. So if it's intense, it could age. It could age, but it doesn't mean it's going to develop into something. It's just going to soften up the bitterness. However, if there's enough fruit and and astringency from the tannins in the in the overall flavor of the wine when you taste it, that has potential to age and let the fruit develop into new flavors, into better flavors or different flavors. However, you like it. Gotcha. And that, the same to grape juice also changes the flavor, right? After a while? Well, grape juice and sweet wines are basically changing flavor. And you have to look at them in a way like you look at a fruit. If you cut open a fruit and you leave it out, it'll start aging immediately. It'll turn colors. If you put it in a plastic bag, it's going to hold it a little longer. Likewise, if you put it in a bottle that has a little bit of alcohol and a little bit of acid, it will, and even though it's sweet, it will hold a little longer but eventually the sugars will start deteriorating the sweetness of the wine and it will change its flavor quicker. But let's say the gra grape juice doesn't have Unless alcohol, right? Unless it's a very special, high concentrated boitrous type of wine where the sugar content is over 30% usually sometimes. Why does grape juice taste different when it's closer to the expiration date versus the beginning? It's just because it's aged at that time is taking, and what, what, taking a toll on it. So the taste becomes sweeter, less sweet? What usually no, happens? it just changes the flavor. And it's, Completely. It doesn't have that freshness of like a fresh fruit. It starts getting it the taste of a dry fruit. So after a year of a bottle of grape juice, even though before expiration, we'll have a drier taste. Less Not fresh. Drier, dried. Dried. Yeah. But it doesn't go bad. Bad? No, that's just not. Anything, but you might you might not like it. Correct. Kind of so how long does it take for a bottle of grape juice to start getting mold in it? Whatever. What's what's like the worst? Had to for mold to get into there. It's usually there's a leak accident or something. Oh, so there's no leak. We'll never get moldy. You won't get mold. A grape juice. No, it just won't taste good. And the longer, it it'll just taste bad. That's all. I mean, it's not when does it really taste bad? How how long after grape juice is it? I don't know. Okay, because I notice with you know with spritzly. After like eight months or six, I think six, seven months, it starts changing flavor. Does that make sense? Yes. Definitely changes. Right. And I see some people hate it and some people don't mind it or whatever. The real mumchem are like, they get angry after six, seven months. If they are, yeah, if they're accustomed to a certain taste and they're sensitive on their taste and have a sense of palate, they'll pick it up. What percent of people do you say have sensitive palates? I don't know. Half, more or less? Okay. Thank you very much, Harav Yosef Zekan, for your Pesach wine tutorial. And it's really cool that you're focusing on the most affordable wines and the best quality. Mm -hmm. Someone once told me, if you want to do well, either focus on the very poor people or the very rich. <laughs> That's not so, the point. The point, is what? That, the point is that people that would like to enjoy wine every day should be able to afford it. And that's really the goal. Very cool. Thank you very much. All the best. Mm -hmm.